In this week's quilt video, find out how I went from this raw edge fabric to this needle turned applique completed quilt top. Last week's video, I showed you how I started with plain white fabric and ended up with this piece ready to be appliqued. It started with drawing the design, sketching that onto paper, painting my background, stretching it across a frame, designing the lines for my eel, making the coral pieces painting the coral pieces. Using a resist to dye and paint my eel. Cutting out the pieces to create the final layout to be appliqued in this video. Ooh, that was a lot. And last week was a lot. It was a lot of painting and quick movements, but this week we're slowing it down with the applique. And here we are. It's Sunday. I've jumped right in. The technique I'm using is called needle turn applique. And it's the OG way, the original way of doing applique. You literally do it one stitch at a time and you Turn under the edges with your needle as you go. Here I'm getting ready to turn under an edge, taking a stitch, and there it is. I've turned under an edge. That's where you get the idea of needle turn applique. Here we go, turning under again, because I'm going around this corner. If you look to the right there, you can see where I've already done the applique work, along with appliquing those fish and the coral, and continuing on. This is why it took 40 hours of applique this week to do all of this. So Sunday was just the beginning. So this is where I started on Monday. All this raw edges still to be turned under on these coral and these fish. I spend the majority of my time like this, kind of hunched over the work. It's not great on my neck, believe me, and I'm trying to work on my posture as I applique, but it is what it is right now. A big part of the process is taking thread off the spool, threading a needle, and these applique needles have a tiny eye on them so they don't have, so they don't pull too much on the fabric as they go through. And here I'm making a quilter's knot by winding the thread onto the needle, pulling it through, and back to appliqueing the work. I do this hundreds of times. Another angle of the applique. I think a lot of people 
assume they don't have the patience for this kind of work. You know, I think people pride themselves on being able to do things quicker or more quickly. Or maybe they don't give themselves enough time to really find out if this kind of small, intricate work is for them. There is something very satisfying about watching the image come together and tucking under those edges like I just did there. To me, it's very satisfying. So I do encourage people to try these old techniques not everything has to be about doing it as fast as you possibly can. We go needle turning once again and taking a stitch. And here's a different angle showing the threading of a needle. And making my quilters knot. getting back to the process of doing the applique. It's very meditative going around and around these coral pieces, getting to discover every little branch as I go and knowing that I had a hand in making every moment of this piece. I think that's very exciting. So this is what we started with. And this is that completed section of coral and fish, all needle turned applique. It really transforms. I love the way the fish are behind the coral. And that's what I completed in two days. To the right is Sunday and to the left is Monday. Okay, so it's Tuesday and I'm working on this large piece of coral at the top of the composition. Doing what I do, turning those edges, taking stitches. Till we end up here. Now we're working on the eel itself. I've taken my small snips and trim away the excess seam allowance so I don't have too much bulk tucked in underneath that eel. Trimming away seam allowance is a big part of doing needle turn applique and you tend to do it as you go so that you don't have too many fraying edges. Here I'm clipping the inner curves. Grabbing my needle, turning under those edges and taking stitches. I already appliqued the purple fish around it because they're behind it. So those needed to be appliqued first and then this appliqued on top of that. So by the time Wednesday rolled around, I had considered 
my original composition. And this, the purple fish weren't doing it for me anymore. I was feeling, I don't know, I wasn't excited about it. So I decided I would riff on my black and white theme with the, with the zebra eel by adding black and white fish. There are a lot of black and white fish that naturally occur on these coral reefs. And so I decided to play with some of these forms and add them to the piece. Just to give a little more visual interest. And now all of a sudden I had a theme developing. So I drew out templates onto pieces of paper and then I just grabbed my white scraps. You can see that's just a piece of scrap fabric there. And traced these on with pencil and just used you know, Sharpie to do the black sections of these fish. I cut out the individual fish. Place them on my wool ironing mat and iron. And that's to set that black ink. Next, I added them to my composition. I did quite a bit of playing around with the layout after the fact, even as I started appliquing to get them just how I wanted them. I ended up making a lot more than I used, using Coco Chanel's advice to take something off before leaving the house. And winding up with this composition, just a few of those little fish. Now we move to the back of the quilt, where I'm actually cutting away the excess fabric. I, I did all the applique layers onto the blue background, but when I'm quilting, I really only want one layer of fabric. So I want it to be the top, the batting, and the backing. I don't want two layers or three layers of top fabric, then the batting, then the backing, because I have a hard time getting my needle through all of that. So what I do is I go through and I carefully cut away the unneeded fabric. So all that's left is just one layer. Here you can see me actually having to very carefully cut away parts because as I was applicating, I did my best to just go through one layer of fabric as I was applicating and not catch all the layers. That would allow me to actually cut it away. It's a bit nerve-wracking thinking you could possibly go through to the top, but I knew that if I did, I could always just add a fish over any hole that I accidentally made, and I didn't make any accidental holes. It is kind of satisfying seeing the image come through from the back as you cut away the fabric. And here it is from the back. It's kind of cool the way the light shines through and you can see where I've done the applique work. Okay, so Thursday, and here's the completed quilt top. I just love how it turned out. 
I think the added fish was a great idea and it works really well. And I'm just loving the composition as a whole. I can't wait to get started quilting it. As a bonus, have a look here. I went ahead and sandwiched it and basted it. But in my next video, I'm gonna show you how I sandwiched it and basted it and also start the quilting. And so that's it for this week's video, 40 hours of hand applique. Next week, it will be all about the quilting and the sandwiching of this quilt. I do hope you'll tune in. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you liked it. And here's a piece of music that I composed just for the occasion with some nice shots of the quilt.